Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to be bringing you another home video. Today we're gonna be looking at how I'm decorating our home and I'm gonna be breaking it down into a little bit smaller chunk so that I can go into more detail and this video won't be forever long because I wanna go through what I chose, why I chose it, kind of the theme that I'm going for, words that I keep in mind when I'm looking for decor for the house and also a strategy that I've been going by that has literally I don't want to say been life changing, but it has changed the way that I have decorated our new home and it has helped tremendously. So the two places I'm going to cover in our home today are the foyer and the living room. So I'm going to go through everything, let you know where everything is from. Everything that I can will obviously be linked in the description box. And I've also found a lot of great dupes for things that I have that I bought several months ago that's no longer available. So be sure and check that out if you're shopping for your home. But let's go ahead and go into how I'm trying to decorate my home. So the words that I'm keeping in mind, because I'm no professional and can't just tell you, hey, this is my style. Like, I'm not a professional. I don't even know all of the terms. So the things that I have kept in mind are that I love a touch of modern. I've also learned as I was going through everything that I also love mid-century modern. So there are nods to that throughout our house. Um, I love a good minimal home. I do minimal decorating. I don't feel pressure to put something on every single blank space on every wall or every blank area. I like things. I'm so sorry. Let me go spit my gum out. <laughs> okay. So going back to minimal decor, I just like a non cluttered look. I like things to have room to breathe and you can really focus on each and every piece that you have. And it just brings joy to the eye without being cluttered and just not knowing what to look at. So that's an approach that I took. I also am a huge fan of clean lines. Um, I love neutrals. I initially thought I was going to be doing the entire house in just neutrals because it looks pretty and clean and relaxing to me. Um, that didn't exactly go as planned. You'll see that I did incorporate some color. My favorite color crept its way into this new house, but I am so in love with it. Um, but because I was going with neutrals in the beginning, a big word that I tried to look for in all of my decor was texture. I wanted to incorporate a lot of texture so that even though a lot of things were the same color and in the same color family, if you add texture in, it adds interest. And I'll point those things out to you, but those are just some words that I look for when I'm looking for my home decor pieces and just kind of the general style that I'm going for. If you know what my style is called once you watch this video, please leave it in the comments down below because I'm no interior designer. This is not my forte. I'm just sharing my home with you out of fun because this is fun for me and I've really enjoyed this and I'm trying to learn more as I go. Um, but just take everything I say with a grain of salt because like I said, I'm no professional and our house is not even complete. I'm going to be showing you for your living room, but even still I have work to do in here, but I thought you would still enjoy seeing the process of it. Okay. I promise that I'm almost done rambling, but I wanted to tell you the strategy that I'm going by to decorate the house that has really changed the way I think about things. And that is put all of your money into one area of your house at a time. Now I wish I could give credit where credit is due, but I cannot remember where I saw this, read this, heard this. I just kind of saw it in passing. It was probably on Instagram, but honestly it was so long ago. I cannot remember who said it, but whoever did really did change the way I think about things. So in our previous home, we had a lot of outdated decor and I kind of just wanted to update the entire house. So I bought a new couch for the living room, a new rug, new pendants in our kitchen. I bought a new rug for our master bedroom and I hung some new beautiful modern artwork in our master bathroom. And so at the end of the day, I had spent our entire budget on those things and you step back and you looked at it and nothing really looked like it had changed. Nothing was a major impact. And so I really just did not get the look that I was going for when I did it that way. And so when I heard that you should spend all of your budget on one space at a time, it really changed the way I thought about our new house. And it really does work out a lot better if you want to make a big impact. So because our home is an open concept, the foyer, living room, kitchen, and dining room are the things that you see first when you walk in the front door or even the back door. It's the place that the guest see. They don't see our master bedroom. They don't see upstairs or the kids' bedroom. They see the main living area when they come here. And so that is what I wanted to put my budget first. I actually kept a list on my phone. These pieces were the most important in each of those places. I bought those first. Then when I got a little bit more money saved, I purchased the next most important piece for those rooms, but I didn't purchase a single thing for the kids' rooms, for the master bedroom, for the master bathroom. I focused it solely here 
on the main living area. So that's of course why you're gonna be seeing those areas first. They are the most furnished. As I said, they're still not complete. So I still feel like our house is very homey. I feel like I am getting there in this area. Of course, I live here, so I don't feel like it's perfect. I don't feel like it's complete. I still see everything that's missing. But to other people, it looks a lot more put together. Um, for our bedroom, for the first six months, well, it's almost been six months that we've been here now, there wasn't a single thing in that room but a bed. We did need a new bed, so I got a very cheap, I think it was like $150 on Overstock. And then we didn't have any nightstands, any window treatments, nothing. There was just a bed in there and a TV that we brought in from the old house. So just recently I got nightstands and finally got curtains on the windows because they're starting to build a house back here behind us. So that was a necessity. You gotta put things up where they're a necessity. But as far as the kids' bedrooms, the only thing I bought for their bedrooms was window treatments because it's a necessity. They still don't have rugs. They don't have pretty pictures on their walls or anything. They just have what we brought in from our previous home. So that's just a little insight as to how I'm decorating our home and why you see so much in here. But if I were to take you back into our master bedroom, it would just look completely bare and like we just moved in. So that has been working out really well for me. Hopefully if you are renovating, redecorating, or building a new home, that's really helpful for you as well. Okay, I am done standing here talking. I'm gonna grab the camera and we're gonna start in the foyer. Okay, so here is our foyer. If you did watch our new house tour, then you'll remember that the only thing in the foyer was this table, but it was unfinished. Um, and then of course the lighting, and that was pretty much it. So everything else has been added since. So I'm gonna come over here so you can see a little better and the sun's not blinding you. So you come in from the door and here is the right side and I have redone the table that I purchased. I love this table. It comes unfinished so you can stain it any color that you want. It also makes it a lot more affordable because you have to finish it out yourself but it was so easy to do. I've never even done a DIY. I've never stained a piece of furniture and it turned out so good. So I'll also link the stain that I use because it's perfect for beginners and they do have several colors. Then I added this lamp. This is from the Studio McGee line at Target and I wanted something again really neutral that I could move around the house later if I wanted to switch things up but you can also see the texture. It's beautiful and just a creamy textured color down here. This part is a lot creamier and that this is more of a white and then it has touches of gold. So the lamp is still sold out. I think everything from that Studio McGee line pretty much sold out almost immediately. So I'll try to find something in comparison, something that has the same like neutral tones and some texture at the bottom. Um, and then here underneath the console table, I initially wanted to do two rope baskets. That was gonna add a lot of texture. You could put blankets in them. You could do a lot of storage under there. But then I saw these Ottomans, which also came from Studio McGee, the threshold line at Target. And I fell in love with them. I loved how it had this print, but it was very minimal. Um, I thought they looked really good up under here and they kind of work twofold. I didn't really need any baskets, but I can take these two ottomans and I can put them right over here in front of the fireplace when we have a group of people over and it will serve as extra seating. So that was great. I think it's gonna work perfectly um, to actually be functional in our home. Then the basket I got from Target as well. It's from the Hearth and Hand line. The candle is as well. I think both are sold out, but I did find some really good dupes for the both of these. And then I have this cute little bottle of matches here. This is really more for looks. It's not super functional. I don't know if anybody really uses matches anymore, but they look really good here by the candle along with some wick trimmers. And then I have two coffee table books. This is a book that I already had that I actually bought to read. And then I bought this top one for its looks called Beautifully Organized, but it turns out it's a really great read. So definitely pick that one up if you're interested in organizing your home or anything like that. It's a wonderful book. I thought the author was fantastic, easy to read, on top of the fact that it looks beautiful as a coffee table book with gorgeous neutral tones. So again, very minimal here. I think I could still add like one more thing. I may move these and move this up and put maybe a picture frame back here or something. I'm not sure yet, but for now, I think it's better to be clean and minimal as opposed to just throwing something up there just to have some decor. 
This base is also old from Target, but it definitely looks like concrete, has a lot of texture to it. It blended in with our neutrals. And then these gorgeous eucalyptus faux plants, of course, are so pretty. This was an awesome find on Amazon. You never know what you're gonna get when it comes to faux plants when you order, but I was more than pleased when I got these in. Let's see. I think I bought two sets. Yes, there's six stems in here, and I think three stems um, come in one order. So yeah, they're just beautiful. They're not too bright green. They have that deeper green, more realistic looking to them, and I just love them. These are definitely something I can move throughout the house if I wanted to change up my console table later. And then we come to the big piece of artwork. This is the thing that has been missing in this room for forever, and it's still not finished. The reason it's been missing is because this frame here is actually from Ikea, and everything's been shut down. I could not get the frame from Ikea because uh, everything with the pandemic going on but as soon as they opened up I grabbed it really fast but they were out of black I originally wanted black for the frame they did not have it in stock so I got the aluminum and I'm just gonna spray paint it black so I just hung this up here like yesterday yeah we hung it up yesterday just so you could see it uh, but then we're gonna take it down and spray paint it when we get a chance the print here is from a place called juniper print shop absolutely love them you can order the prints their paper is like this vinyl hybrid it's very pretty very matte um, and it looks great without glass or plexiglass on top and it's specifically designed to go in these ikea frames on a larger scale so you don't have to have glass to it you don't have to buy a very expensive frame that frame was twenty dollars you pay a little bit more for the art but not nearly as much as you would for an actual piece of artwork so i believe that that size which is pretty pretty dang big was about hundred and twenty dollars so all in all that was hundred and forty I don't think that's too bad for large-scale art and I think it looks beautiful here and it is our little pop of color in here then down to the rug texture was my inspiration for this as well I wanted something very neutral I had already purchased this picture and that was gonna be as much color as I really wanted in here so I didn't know what to get um, other than a neutral and I thought this worked out perfectly as far as adding interest with texture but it's pretty much the same color as our floors I'm really pleased with this it does not shed now you will see like right here there's a knot coming up that is solely because I have a two and a half year old son who likes to pull on it so I think if you have dogs this might not be the best uh, if you have little boys little kids you might end up with some things like this, but I think I can just cut that and it's not really gonna show. It does have some bigger knots in it, so it's not like the most comfortable. I don't think you'd want this in a place that was like a high traffic area, like your living room, or something you wanted to lay on. You can see a knot here as well. But for an entryway rug, I think it's perfect and it just adds that texture that I've been craving. Now on the other side over here, we have the office doors that I showed that have the mirrors in them. And this is the exact reason that I didn't do a mirror above the console table. This is my mirror for the entryway. And so I knew I wanted a piece of artwork over here. I love these mirrors. Please excuse all of the uh, blue tape. Yeah, our house is actually not even officially finished. The blue painter's tape um, is because the painters still have to come back and do their final pass. So we've marked every little uh, nick and everything on the walls that they need to see to. So yeah, you're gonna see like a bunch of painter's tape if you look closely, but just don't mind that. So there is the foyer. You've got the mirrors, the beautiful, I think this is like jewelry in the entryway, some texture, and then a minimal, simple, but I think a very beautiful console table over here on the right. And then you walk straight into the living room area. So I'm gonna go over all of this. Okay, we'll just go ahead and start with the furniture as you come into the living room. These chairs are one of my favorite. This is definitely a nod to mid-century modern. They are a lot lower than I at first expected and I was thinking, oh, the backs of these look super low. But I actually really love it because you can come in here and these are really pretty and you see them, but you can also see everything else in the living room and it leaves this big window to be like a main focal point. The back of these chairs aren't like obstructing your view to everything else. So I really like them right here. 
And these chairs are from Target and surprisingly enough, they're still in stock because I think they're a super popular chair for Target that they keep restocking them. They even have new colors now. So they even have more colors to choose from, but the color of mine is called Husk. I'm gonna insert a picture so you can get a really good close up of it, but it's just a really good neutral that has a lot of like beigey cream tones to it. So it's definitely darker than like off white, but it doesn't look brown. It's just the perfect neutral that would go with either taupey brown shades or beiges or even go well with gray. It just adds some warmth, so I really love the color of those. Then I got these throw pillows from Hearth and Hand from Target and they do still have these in stock, only they're in the bigger pillow. They don't still have the lumbar, um, but they do have this exact pillow still left in the larger, I think it's like an 18 by 18 size. So like I said, my favorite color crept into my whole color scheme, and that is blue. But this is just the most beautiful soft blue. The lines are still that beautiful neutral color, like a taupey. And so I just really love how these ended up looking in the chairs. The wood tone is also something I wanted to mention. It's just nice and neutral and would go with a variety of different floors. They are also extremely comfortable. I know they look like they have a really low back to where it wouldn't be comfortable, but when you sit in it, you still have a place to like lean back. Even my husband is very comfortable in these and he's like six foot two. So he still finds these very comfortable. They're not hard to get up and down out of. They're not quite that low. Um, and then with the lumbar pillow, they're just even more comfortable, so. Okay, let's go on to the coffee table. So initially, I had a pretty small budget for furniture, so I ended up finding this uh, coffee table on Amazon for incredibly cheap. Well, I mean, especially for a coffee table. It was very inexpensive, and I have been so pleased with it. I just think it looks so pretty. It definitely has a more modern touch to it. I love the pop of black that matches so much in my home. Um, I won't lie and say it came in just pristine condition and it's the best quality. It definitely came with some scratches on it. I honestly can't even find them now. It may have been like on the metal and there's like some marks on the bottom. So you have to put this together yourself. We just took the one that had the most marks and put it on the bottom and then we put the nice looking one on top. I think it worked out great. I don't think anybody notices. And as far as being sturdy, it is very sturdy. My two year old hasn't torn it up, so that's great. He has drawn all over the top with a marker numerous times it's still holding up. So I would highly recommend this table, especially if you're on a budget. So initially I had absolutely no idea how to style a coffee table. So I went to the source that I trust the most, my favorite interior designer, and that is Shay McGee from Studio McGee. I just watched her video, took her pointers for decorating a coffee table and also decorating a circular coffee table. And I tried to implement it as best as I could. So here on the bottom, I have a coffee table book and it is the largest one that I own. She said to anchor the bottom just one big piece so I ended up putting my largest uh, coffee table book down here and then I put four coasters on the top those are just really pretty like acacia wood and marble coasters so that I could actually have easy access to them and actually pop them up here when I have guests over that need a coaster um, and so that's very minimal very simple but I think that large book really does anchor the bottom and then up here, she said to think in triangles when it comes to a circular coffee table. So you can see the triangle here. This spiky gold thing, I don't even know what you would call that. It definitely adds texture and it came from my old house. So I just incorporated it into my decor here. I got this vase, very nice and neutral. Again, adds texture um, from Target. It is older though. And these cherry blossoms are from Amazon. Also very pleased with those. I think they are beautiful. And they also add a little bit of color in here. Then we have what I'm sure you've seen everywhere in home decor. We have coffee table books um, and some wooden beads. Love these coffee table books. Again, nice neutral colors and also fun to read. So this one is called Down to Earth and then Joanna Gaines' Homebody. I will link those both from Amazon. The wooden beads are also from Amazon and pretty inexpensive. This little thing here was just a nice little, I don't know, is it stone granite? Just a little knickknack. I actually found it at H&M Home. Um, I'll try to look for something similar to that. I haven't been able to find anything yet, but if you're looking for little decorations, knickknacks, you probably haven't thought to look at H&M and it's a really great resource for home decor. 
Then we have the couch and love seats that I obviously want to talk about because I do highly recommend them. Uh, but first we'll talk about the pillows. I got most of the pillows again from Hearth and Hand from Target. I like very affordable, accessible things. And Joanna makes it really easy to mix and match patterns, like it's really popular and adds interest. But I'm not very good at that, and she makes it very, very easy. So this one is from Hearth and Hand, which goes beautifully with this. Uh, this one I got on Amazon. It's just like a faux leather. Um, but the lumbar pillow is from her and then the blue pillows are also so the blue looks really good with the strap It looks really good with black and white this one. Where did I get this one? I also got it from Target but a very long time ago, and I just really like the modern interest it added as well The colors also went really good with the straps so yeah, I just kind of tried to play with my favorite colors and neutrals and textures all in one. And then I added a throw blanket that was a very nice neutral color, but you can kind of see like the slub texture. And then it has a few fringes at the bottom. This was also from Target. Um, just a nice neutral throw that you could actually use, but it really does add some texture to the couch as well. So for the couch itself, I've been wanting to actually use these for a decent amount of time before I really jumped in and recommended them, and I highly recommend these. Um, but unfortunately, they were just discontinued. I got them off of Joss and Main, and they're no longer on the website. Why do they do that to me? They do, however, have something incredibly similar to these. The look is the same and it's still the same custom where you pick the fabric that goes on it, they custom cover it, and then they send it to you. So I'm gonna link that one. So I will definitely link that other couch for you that I found, but my main tip that I would give you is just to read reviews. I looked at the dimensions. I measured in here. I measured the depth of the couch to make sure that it wasn't too deep. I know a lot of people like a deep couch, I don't like the deepest of couches. I don't want my feet to dangle. Um, but I read a lot of reviews. I ordered samples of my favorite colors and they will surprise you. So this color here, I think I took a picture of it so I could really show you a close-up detail. This one is called Bevan Natural and they are white couches. When you walk in, they definitely look white, but they have that linen texture to them. And woven throughout it are darker strands. It really seems to hide the dirt and stains well. It also is really easy to get out stains. I have not had any problems. My son has gotten so many stains on this cushion right here. Let me show you. You can kind of see right here, it's a little bit darker. Actually, that's probably a newer one. I need to treat that. But the, for, for the most part, he's gotten stains all over this and you cannot even tell it once I do it with Stain Treater. It has held up really well, and it's really not that easy to get dirty, which shocked the heck out of me, to be honest. Yeah, so that was my main thought when I went to Jocelyn Main first, is that I did not want to spend a ton on a white couch before I knew if I could even keep up with one. The couch itself was like seven, eight hundred dollars, um, and the love seat was actually close to the same. There wasn't a whole lot of price difference in them. But even still, together, couch and love seat, it actually came out to about the same price together as one white couch from, say, Crate and Barrel, West Elm, you know, any of those other stores that you would find really beautiful furniture, white furniture. This actually was either cheaper or the same price as one and I got the both of them for that type of price. So I was really pleased with that. It does seem to be holding up very well, but like I said, we've only been here almost six months now, so I would just take that with a grain of salt as well. You're not gonna see your most wear and tear within the first six months anyway, and we do hang out upstairs a lot. Well, you know what, I take that back. My son hangs out on these couches like nobody else does, and he's probably the hardest on a piece of furniture as anybody in our household. So they've done pretty well for six months. So yeah, very, very comfortable. Um, as far as Joss and Maine, I had a really good experience with them. I got the samples for free. I picked it out. They sent me an email, you know, telling me about how long it was gonna take, and it was within that time frame. I think it's about six to eight weeks. So definitely order ahead of time if you're thinking about it, because it does take a little while um, for them to actually custom cover it. And then they deliver into your home fully assembled. So that was very, very nice. It came in a humongous box uh, because the couch was fully assembled and you just like slid it right out and took the wrapping off. Very, very easy. All right, it's time to move on to the bookshelves, fireplace and all this. 
and that will be the end of the video. All right, the built-in bookshelves. These have been the bane of my existence because anybody that isn't a professional knows these are hard. This is hard to do, so these are not complete. They're not perfect, please don't judge me on them, but I will show you what I have in them right now. I showed you um, these door handle pulls in the home tour video, but they really do add so much down here. They are a leather wrapped handle, and then they have this touch of brass that ties in really nicely to the lighting we have up here. So these just add so much already at the bottom. Um, and then I went very minimal. I told you, I wanted simplicity. I wanted them to have room to breathe. I didn't wanna to put too much together in one place. Um, so a lot of places I just have one large item. Have this bowl, again, Studio McGee. As soon as she releases her next round at Target, y'all be ready because they sell out quick and there's so many good things. She has like a multi-year contract with Target, so there is gonna be another round. Uh, but I will link some pedestal bowls, some larger pedestal bowls, so you can see what I had found. Um, over here, I got this frame at Target. I just love the texture of the wood and the pop of black that I'm trying to add in. All of these books, all the books you see, except for the coffee table books that I'm gonna point out, they just were from my personal collection and I took off covers and I turned them around backwards. So there's some over here as well. These are just regular books. Uh, some of my books had white covers, some had black, so that worked out perfectly. I just took the top cover off. Uh, but back to over here, this was a sculpture that I first bought when we were first building this house and I was so excited for it. My husband thought I was absolutely nuts, but I just loved it. It just adds so much interest to me and I love something like this. It really adds a modern touch and I found this exact one, but not in black, unfortunately, but it is in gold. So I will link that one for you. Up here, nice and simple, a glass box. This is from Opal House by Target. Um, and I will link one smaller box that I found that is very, very similar. The Chanel coffee table book also came from Amazon. Adds a little black and white. Up here, I just have a couple of empty vases. I found these at At Home. They were on clearance. So I just grabbed two of them with the intent of spray painting them, but I haven't gotten around to it. I just stuck them up here together and I actually kind of like them. It really adds to the simplicity because it kind of blends into the white but you can definitely see the shape and the texture of them. Um, and these candlesticks I got from Amazon. They're beautiful. Earlier I had them up here on the mantle, but I moved them over here. They're also really pretty. You could put them on your tablescape. They're just a multifunctional piece in your house. And then of course, adding greenery to your bookcases. It's a great idea. This one is from Target, but sold out. There's another one that is incredibly similar, kind of the same height, same width. Um, and it's one that is still in stock. It actually is right out here on the, on the patio. Can you see it right through there? That plant right there, that one is still in stock and very pretty. That would also look good in a bookcase. I'm gonna link that one because it is still in stock. And then because this is not my forte and I have a really hard time with it, I wanted to do matching baskets and originally I had them down here at the bottom, but this part is bigger. So because this part up here is a lot smaller um, and those baskets are pretty short, I ended up sticking them up here. They are a nice natural woven color with black throughout. So it really goes great with my color scheme and it kind of ties everything together. It has like a matching element because there's two over here as well. And it also just makes it easier. So if you're struggling, add a few matching baskets to some of your bookcases or anywhere in your living room and I think it really ties things together and just makes it easier for people like me that have trouble with little knickknacks like this. So here's the fireplace. It is also very simple and minimal. I have nothing on my mantle and I pretty much plan to keep it that way. I really like the TV being the center of the focus because we have the Samsung frame TV. It looks like a piece of art and I like that to be the focus. Um, and then down here, just a really simple faux fiddle leaf fig tree. So this is one that I had from years and years ago and I actually found a basket to put it in. But I found one online that is in stock and more recent that actually comes with a basket almost just like this. So I'm gonna link that for you. But this just adds that nice fresh greenery to the living room. If I had a greener thumb, it would be real, but I don't. My thumb is as black as that granite right there. I can't keep a single thing alive. My two things that I keep alive are my kids, and that's all I can do. 
I actually added this yesterday. This was a basket that I had just sitting in the guest bedroom and this uh, throw blanket has actually been on the love seat, but I just threw it in here and it's really pretty. I think it just adds a little interest because this spot right here didn't have anything and this over here had a plant. So I think it balances out quite nicely. And I'll just go through these really quick. Something wooden adds a lot of texture and interest. These are some big vases. Another little greenery, another sculpture. I'm in love with sculptures. With another little round knickknack, I found it at home. Over here, I found these vases on Amazon and I just looked, they're no longer in stock. Uh, but Amazon is a really great place to look. You can just type in like decorative vase and you'd be surprised with what you can find. A little faux succulent on top of some really old hymnals. That's just a nod to how I grew up and so I love having those there. They're actually from an old church. We have the other two baskets up here. Up here I am still looking for some bookends so these aren't actually going to stay but they're two candles from Target uh, acting as bookends for all of my chat books. So I have chat books made for all of our trips and also for each year of the kids life. I take uh, pictures off of my phone and I put it into the yearly chat book for each of my children. So those are up here and I just need some really pretty bookends. But for now, the candles are gonna do. And then over here is another matching frame to the other one. The other one was a four by six. This is a horizontal five by seven. So it kind of ties in together with the other one over here. And this black wooden bowl is actually a salad bowl from Target, but it looks really good up there. And you could also use it in your kitchen if you wanted to. That one is still in stock and I will definitely link it. So I'll step back and there is the living room. It's very clean and simple. And like I said, just a lot of organic texture, touch of modern, mid-century modern. Um, and then over here, the foyer, same thing, kind of the same look and feel when you first walk in. I hear interior designers say that the foyer sets the tone for the entire house. So I definitely want to add something over here eventually, maybe like a floor plant or a couple of vintage photos over here. Um, I don't feel like it's completely done, but it is really good for now. I feel good about what I have right now here in the foyer and living room. Okay, I almost forgot the last thing in the living room is our rug. We went so long without a rug in here because the first one that I ordered was on back order and they just kept pushing the date back and kept pushing it back and eventually they just canceled the order and I'm so glad that they did because I love this one so much more than the original rug. So I'm trying to find a place where you can really see, but it has a lot of beige, creamy tones along with some white. This one is called silver but the silver actually pulls blue. So it's a very light, very neutral, bluish gray color along with the cream and the white. And I think it's just gonna go with anything that I decide to put in here. Even if I change my colors up, um, I think it's gonna go, it's just beautiful. Again, it's held up well for, what, six months? It hasn't really been that long, but anything that's gotten in it, I've easily gotten up. As far as the quality, it is a very inexpensive rug for how large it is, but it's very, very thin. If you wanted something very cushy, you're gonna have to put a rug pad up under it um, because it is very thin, but I love how low profile it is in here. It kind of just blends in with the floor. I wanna say this is a 10 by 14 rug. I mean, it's a massive rug and it was such a good price for how large it was. <laughs> I was so impressed and so pleased when it came in at how beautiful it was because it was very inexpensive for a rug that large. I think it looks good. I love all of the soft tones, a little pop of pink. I love blue, even though it is color and it's not completely neutral. It's a very soft color. It's very relaxing and it's my favorite color to decorate with. And then on the Samsung Frame TV, we also have some blue incorporated that kind of ties into the pillows over here. So that is my foyer and living room. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you found it helpful. I know I rambled on forever, I'm so sorry. But for those of you that are interested and in wanting to shop this, I feel like more detail is better. So I hope that this was really helpful for you in that way. Let me know if you have any questions down below and be sure and open the description box if you're looking for anything. I'm gonna try to be as detailed as possible in giving exact 
things that are here in the living room and foyer and also good dupes and similar items that I can link as well if you're looking for something uh, just like mine. All right, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Be on the lookout in the future. Probably next I will do the kitchen and dining room um, and maybe the powder room in with that. But those are really the only places that I have this decorated anyway. So I'm gonna keep working on the house. And as I get things a little bit more completed, I will definitely share with you the process. I enjoy this. It's kind of a hobby of mine to decorate. It's something I'm just working on because I enjoy it. I'm no expert, but it's really fun for me. So it's been fun to share it with you as well. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me today and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.